Everyone is predicting they were on the verge of a property crash, with estimates ranging from a fall of 10% all the way to 35%. But the truth is, there's no need to predict. Most people have missed it, but we're actually well into one of the most significant price drops in decades. And the good news is, if you're an investor or a homeowner already, this could be the best crash you ever have. I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute, but first I need to show you why the crash isn't just getting started, it's well underway. Let's start by looking at this house price chart. You can see that from 2020, house prices went almost vertical, growing by 20% or more. What goes up that quickly tends to come down quickly too, and that tiny little dip right at the end only amounts to a fall of 4-5% to so far. That's why it looks like this is just the start, and there's another 15% to come, or maybe even more, given that we were already at all-time highs going into 2020. I'm not saying that there aren't further falls to come, but almost certainly are. What I'm saying is that although this chart is disguising it, house prices have actually already fallen by far more than the 4% that's showing up here, and that's because we're measuring it with the wrong tool. When you measure something, you need to believe that the tool you're using to measure it with is consistent over time. You'd struggle to make a cake if your scales gradually became less accurate, so they showed the same amount of flour as being 100 grams today, but 150 grams by next year. But this is effectively what's happening when we measure anything in pounds, because the pound itself is changing in value or to be more precise, falling in value because of inflation. Because property wasn't the only thing that went up sharply in price from 2020. It's the same for food, for petrol, for wages. And when the price of everything has gone up and isn't coming back down, that's basically the same as saying that the value of the pound has fallen. So what happens if we correct for this and hold the value of the pound constant? This is known as looking at prices in real terms which just means after stripping out any changes that are due to general inflation, so you're looking purely at changes in the thing itself. When we do that for housing, we see a very different picture. Now, that absolutely crazy spike starting in 2020, it's still there if you squint, but you'd barely notice it. This means that most of that crazy house price growth was just inflation. And this chart also makes that dip at the very end look far more significant. And that's because while the price of everything else has continued to rise, inflation's at 8.7% right now, property hasn't and has actually started to go back the other way. In fact, in real terms, property prices have already fallen by 12.5% from their peak. And that means that after adjusting for inflation, property is far below where it was at the start of 2020. And actually, it's back to where it was in 2014. After all, people are paying their mortgages with their salaries, and investors are looking at the returns they make based on rents. So if wages, rents, and everything else are higher because of the pound losing value, and property prices are staying the same, they're actually falling. And for every month that everything else keeps on going up in price, but property prices aren't, the real terms drop just gets bigger. So with inflation running at 8% or more, if property prices just stay where they are for another year, which seems optimistic compared to most forecasts, you'd end up with a real terms drop of more than 20%. How would a 20% drop compare to past crashes? Well, let's see what happened in 2008. But before we do, if you've learned something useful so far, consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It helps us out and it makes it more likely that you'll see our videos in the future. So, 2008. You can see from the nationwide house price data that real property prices peaked in the third quarter of 2007 at today's equivalent of £323,000 and didn't stop falling until five years later at today's equivalent of £239,000. That's a drop of 26%. That is more than double the peak to trough drop of 12% you see when you don't account for inflation. And inflation adjusted prices fell for three years longer too. As you can see, nominal property prices bumped along at round about the same price for about three years from 2011 to 2013. But because there is inflation, that equated to a real terms fall. As I said, we could easily see the same again. House prices bumping along for another year could take us to a 20% real terms drop. And if they fall a bit rather than just bumping along sideways, which you've got to say is likely, then in 12 months time, you could have a deeper real terms fall than we did in 2008, which was a time when property lending had got out of control and the banking system almost collapsed. So make no mistake, when you correct for inflation, we're not waiting around for a crash. It's happening and it's probably going to keep on happening for at least another year. But whether you're a homeowner or an investor, this is the best type of crash you could possibly have. What you really want as a property owner is for your property to grow in value while your debt stays the same. When that happens, all the equity gain, the value of property above the mortgage, is yours to keep. 
In a nominal crash, your equity is quickly whipped away from you as the opposite happens. The value of the property falls while your debt stays the same. But right now, neither of these things is happening to a significant degree. Your property isn't rising in value, but nor is your debt, so you're not losing any equity. In fact, the value of your debt is shrinking because of, you guessed it, inflation. Inflation means that your rents should be increasing. And if you're earning an income to fuel your property business, then that should be increasing too. So your debt is still shrinking in real terms, it's getting easier to pay off, even if it's not shrinking relative to your asset value. And with inflation being as high as it is, the shrinking of your debt is happening faster than ever. And this situation actually isn't at all unusual. If we look at the real terms chart again, you can see that property prices fall in real terms quite a lot. It happened from 2016 to 2018, obviously from 2007 to 2030, from 1988 to 96, between 1980 and 82, is completely different from when you look at nominal prices, where it's just an upward line with the occasional sharp correction. So this is all very interesting, but what should you actually do with this perspective? First of all, I'm not saying that house prices won't fall further in today's pounds terms. They probably will do, and it's entirely possible that there will be some giant structural shift that causes property prices to totally collapse. I don't know, and nor does anyone. All I'm saying is that you can stop waiting for a property crash because in a very meaningful way, it's happening now. And because inflation has been so aggressive, while it's absolutely possible that prices could fall by another 10% or more, they don't have to, to compensate for the COVID growth and bring everything back into line. In fact, if you look at this chart, this is showing real house prices with the red line showing a trend of 1.5% annual real growth starting in 1975. This trend is higher than the long-term trend of 1.1% that you get if you go all the way back to 1845, but not dramatically. I like looking at a long-term view like this because whether you're a homeowner or an investor, you're buying property for the long-term, not based on what you think might happen in the next 12 months. But if you're interested in buying more property right now, then the current panic about what's happening in the market is great news because you've got the upper hand. But most buyers are totally ill-prepared and miss easy tricks that can help them take advantage. So continue watching this video where I share some tactics and software tools that I use to bag bargains in uncertain markets.